Number 10, Chavo Guerrero. Chavo Guerrero is a legend within the business and has had a noteworthy career within several promotions. Due to his last name of Guerrero, he is often compared to Eddie, who seems to have cast a large shadow for Chavo to have to step out of. After the heartbreaking passing of Eddie in 2005, Chavo would move up and down the card with the years that followed, but by the time that he won the ECW title in 2008, his spot on the card had slipped dramatically compared to years beforehand. It wasn't the case that Chavo was necessarily a bad champion, but the booking and timing in which it happened seemed to hurt him more than help. He would eventually lose the title in record time to Kane at WrestleMania 24 in just 11 seconds, putting the nail in the coffin for Chavo's title reign. Number 9, Johnny Nitro. Johnny Nitro was another solid performer on the roster. However, the circumstances in how he won the title were due to a horrific event. In 2007, CM Punk had qualified to the finals of the ECW title tournament to face off against the rabid Wolverine Chris Benoit. However, on the build up to the Vengeance Night of Champions pay per view, Benoit would no show, leaving the WWE to quickly find a replacement to face Punk for the vacant ECW title in the form of Johnny Nitro. In a shocking twist, Nitro would beat Punk to win the title. However, the timing of this didn't really help, as Nitro was still being established on the roster and was viewed as being lower down on the card with little credibility before ever entering this match. In an even more shocking twist, it was found that Chris Benoit had been found dead alongside his family due to him committing a double murder homicide. Number 8. Mikey Whitbreck The spirit of the original ECW was like none other and its leader Paul Heyman had an unmatched talent for always bringing the best out of his limited performers. Perhaps the perfect example of this was the story of Mikey Whitwreck. Mikey had started off as a member of the ECW ring crew, helping assemble the ring for events. Paul Heyman would take Mikey and turn him into ECW's most beloved underdog, a lovable loser that just kept on coming back. Miraculously, Mikey would manage to capture every major title within the ECW promotion, including the ECW World Heavyweight title after beating the Sandman in a ladder match in 1995. Although his title reign was for a very short time, and it was a wholesome moment to see how far he had come, the credibility of an average looking person such as Mikey Whitwreck being the ECW World Champion didn't really help legitimise ECW moving forward. Number 7. Just Incredible Although ECW never had the biggest platform, its impact on the wrestling business will forever be felt. It provided an alternative for both the fans and performers, and offered a new land of opportunity for anyone who wanted to reinvent themselves in the land of the extreme. A perfect example of this would be Just Incredible, who previously performed as the masked Portuguese Man of War, which had gotten him limited success. However, when Just Incredible arrived in ECW, he would soon work his way up to world champion status as the promotion approached its final years. Justin would manage to pick up a huge win over Tommy Dreamer to finally win the ECW heavyweight title, however his reign was quite uneventful and often forgotten as the promotion closed down less than a year later. Number 6. Jack Swagger when Jack Swagger debuted in WWE's ECW brand in 2009, ECW was a much more watered down version than its original state. A year before, in 2008, the WWE would introduce a brand new ECW title belt design, and out of the six men to hold that specific belt, Jack Swagger was one of them. On paper, Swagger seemed like a deserving champion, but in reality, his character wasn't up to scratch yet, and just didn't connect with the audience. When he beat Matt Hardy in January of 2009 to win the ECW title, his 104 day reign only cemented the fact that the ECW brand was inferior to Raw and SmackDown, as Swagger would lose the title to Christian a few months later at Backlash 2009. Number 5. Don Morocco In the early 80s, Magnificent Don Morocco would be a big contributor to the WWE Having won the Intercontinental title twice, he never quite broke into the main event scene. However, in 1988, Don Morocco would leave the WWE and begin competing amongst various independent promotions, 
until signing with what was known as Eastern Championship Wrestling in 1992, which would eventually go on to become ECW. It was here that he would go on to defeat Jimmy Superfly Snooker to capture the ECW world title before losing it only six days later to the Sandman. Rocco would go back to the independence for a brief period before returning once again to ECW to capture the world title for a second time defeating the Sandman. Morocco's second reign would last much longer at around 127 days but Morocco's title reigns would only make ECW look dated as he began to slow down later in his career rather than portraying ECW as a young and upcoming promotion. Number 4 Ezekiel Jackson by 2009, ECW was fully fledged as its own full third brand, but instead of being on the level of Raw and SmackDown, it was more so on the level of WWE's forgettable shows such as Velocity and Superstars. Looking back, the relaunch of ECW under the WWE banner barely had any time at all to embody the old spirit of the company before it became just another flashy WWE produced show. In the final dying days of ECW, the final nail in the coffin was the crowning of Ezekiel Jackson as ECW World Heavyweight Champion. Jackson had become the focal point of the ECW brand as the new up and coming powerhouse, where he would go on to unsuccessfully challenge Christian for the title at the 2010 Royal Rumble before finally defeating him on the final episode of ECW to capture and retire the ECW World Heavyweight title. Number 3 Tito Santana much like Don Morocco, Tio Santana was a huge part of WWE during the 80s. Santana was a former two-time WWE Intercontinental Champion and was a top babyface in the company at a time when the business was red hot. However, as the early 90s rolled around, Santana had begun to lose a step within the ring and would leave the WWE in 1993 after spending a decade with the company. In that same year, however, Santana would sign with the ECW and enter a feud with his longtime rival Don Morocco. The pair would face off on an episode of ECW Hardcore TV in 1993, where Santana would defeat Morocco for the ECW World Heavyweight title. He'd go on to hold the title for just under a month before ending his uneventful title reign by forfeiting the belt to Shane Douglas and leaving ECW altogether. Number 2 Johnny Hotbody Every wrestling promotion has its fair share of questionable champions over time, and in some cases, a who the hell is this moment, when referencing certain names. And one such case of that is of Johnny Hotbody. Only the most die-hard of ECW fans will remember Johnny Hotbody, as he is actually the second ever ECW champion in history. He would defeat Jimmy Superfly Snooker a day after Snooker originally won the title in 1992. Johnny Hotbody would then hold the ECW Championship for 79 days until dropping it back to Snooker. Johnny Hotbody would also become the first ever ECW TV Champion later that same year before vacating the title due to an injury and fading back into obscurity forever. Number 1 Vince McMahon when fans were first treated to the relaunch of the ECW brand in 2006, everyone was ecstatic, but the WWE quickly watered down the product to a mere shell of its former self. During this time, the WWE would make many questionable decisions for the brand of Extreme, including crowning WWE Chairman Vince McMahon as the ECW World Heavyweight Champion. McMahon would enter a feud with Bobby Lashley after losing his hair at WrestleMania 23 with the help of Shane McMahon and Umaga. McMahon would go on to defeat Lashley for the ECW title at Backlash 2007. Vince McMahon would hold the title for 34 days before dropping the title back to Lashley. However, the sight of McMahon strutting around with a do-rag and the ECW title seriously took the shine out of the belt. After this, the title would continue to lose prestige throughout its time in WWE. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more wrestling content.